Welcome to the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. This podcast is about all things outdoor photography, including landscapes, wildlife, macro, and more. The show features two talented photographers, Henry Doyle and Ryan Taylor, who bring their different experiences in photography to the podcast. The show is released weekly every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome back to episode 30 of the All Outdoors <laughs> Photography Podcast. And today we're talking about something a bit different, but pretty crucial for what we do in photography. Yep. We are talking about all things related to uh, hiking and backpacking. Um, so we're kind of going to put away the cameras for a little bit and just talk strictly about the actual outdoors experience and adventure. Yeah. Because, I mean, you have to get mm-hmm. to your locations or even if you're not doing photography, you just have to get to know nature and Hiking yeah. how you do it. So. Even if you're not going a million miles, it's still, I feel like it'd be useful. But uh, anyways, yeah, we're actually going to dive right into a uh, question we actually got, listener mail, I guess. Um, so his name is Jerry Wade. Hi, Jerry. Uh, he asked, do you guys go out and shoot with the intention of editing your images or do you try to, your best to get them right in camera? So what do you, what do you think, Henry? Um, so if you asked me that this time last year, it would have been a completely different answer. It would have been kind of shoot for the edit. I kind of back then I thought it was like Nick page and like, (laughs) like the six frames with the different luminosity levels and all that dodging and burning and all that stuff. (laughs) Nowadays I'm really just minimal. I'm editing just more time out in the field. So I like to get it as close as possible in camera. Um, Sometimes I'll bracket like occasionally, but it's usually just like two shots, put them together. That's about it. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm more of the same, honestly. Um, I, I, I've been trying to be really hyper conscious about it. I will try to get it as perfect as I can in camera. Um, I'll do like the typical stuff. I'll shooting a landscape. You know, um, I'll check all my corners before I take the shot. Uh, just stuff like that so I can really minimize the editing time and, you know, the time spent in front of the computer because I just, that could be such a chore, you know, at times. Um, so, yeah, I, I try to get my best to get it in camera. Um, sometimes you just simply can't. Like, maybe... There's, I don't know, you're photographing of the, the woods or something, and there's some like piece of trash. I've had this happen before, um, and you can't really go off trail realistically to get that trash and take it out, F it, and clone it out later. You know, stuff like that can happen, of course, too. But yeah, yeah, try my best to get it in camera. Yeah, but yeah, I just try to represent nature as naturally as possible, personally. So, oh yeah, the way I go. Yeah, definitely. Me too. Yeah, me too. But yeah, thank you, Jerry, for your question. That's great. And um, if anyone has any questions, you can email us or uh, direct message us on Instagram. Um, and we'd be happy to feature them on the show. Yeah. Thanks again for the question. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, uh, hiking, backpacking. So um, I feel like most outdoor photographers will say they enjoy that aspect of the whole, I guess we'll call it experience. Because, you know, like Henry said earlier, it's a big part of what we do. Um, so I'm going to get kind of philosophical here so like henry what does nature kind of do for you how does it make you feel out there well i've always loved nature um way before photography my family's big into hiking so that was always something i did from a very young age um and nature is just really kind of my mind really clears when i'm out in nature no matter what i'm doing really um it doesn't have to be photography but um just kind of hiking around and just looking around and just enjoying the sights it's it's really therapeutic honestly it's helped mm-hmm. through hard times and it's just it's great That's oh definitely I say about yeah, yeah I, I totally agree yeah it's kind of how i got started with photography going out in nature with the cameras like it was kind of like therapy for me you know it's just kind of like a way to kind of de-stress and unwind and um to put yourself behind the camera it just really opens up this whole different world uh, where i kind of lose myself with the process which um, yeah. So, but nature in general, I mean, I just, I get so excited just going out and seeing new things. Um, and of course, experiencing with other people too, which is great. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a big, I mean, it's really my life, honestly. So it's a big part of what I do and what I love. Hiking is just like 
so different from like daily activities. Um, <laughs> even like I know taking a walk is kind of similar, but like hiking is just something on its own like plane of existence. Like <laughs> when you hike, you're really just transported to another world, and it's just it, it's really it's really great. Yeah, it's like a it's it's a weird sense of like it's hard to describe it honestly for me yeah it's just a weird it's like a good weird feeling you know but it just makes me pretty overjoyous every time i'm out um and like i said we'll talk about it a little bit later maybe but it's like with taking a break from the camera too i find it's really beneficial and just experiencing nature and just seeing new things without having to worry about getting a shot or something it's Definitely. a big deal because <laughs> we i mean we uh, do we do so much photography you know sometimes you can lose the fun of hiking if you get too much into it sometimes oh yeah i do a lot of like long distance hikes uh well, not a lot but i do quite a bit of them uh, a couple times a year like we'll say over 20 miles in a day stuff like that you know that could be really big and you kind of exhaust but you know i do those without the camera usually um and just you know enjoy the i guess the overall experience of it too yeah definitely. do you do you do any like backpacking or any kind of uh through hikes I like haven't really, hiker. I haven't really done a lot of backpacking. Um, I I do long hikes though, um, in the summer especially. I've done mm -hmm. like 10, 15 mile hikes before. Um, not a big camping guy. Like I'm not opposed to it. I just don't camp a lot. Um, and, something you'd like to do in the future? You think camping? Yeah, definitely. I think this summer I'm gonna go out to um, an island in Michigan and you take a ferry out there and camp. So it's like completely natural it'll be really fun yeah yeah that's, that sounds awesome yeah I'm, I'm kind of the same boat as you honestly like i haven't done much camping um i want to do more solo camping um and probably with just a couple of like close friends but yeah i haven't done much of that um but yeah like through hiking is something enough into kind of just experience that it's pretty neat um but yeah overall i'm more of a day hike person just because you know the limited time i, ha I have is like it's called i can really do most of the time anyways yeah, and it's hard to carry all that gear around too for camping, especially if you have to hike to get to the location. I mean, that's a lot of weight. Oh, yeah, definitely. Or yeah, hiking to your campsite and stuff like that. Yeah. Plus, you if you to, bring... you have to time it right so you don't like have to set up at night, and it's it's pretty complicated. Yeah, yeah I've done some like little, I guess I call them mock trails of like just campsites locally around here um, where I live, and. If you, I, I can attest to that. If you set up your gear, your tent, like way too late at night, you know, after dark, it's just not fun and you're going to get stressed out. You know, it's just terrible. So yeah. I guess that's a lesson learned at least. I think yeah. overall though, it's still definitely worth it. Uh, oh de yeah, definitely. I'm yeah. definitely going to do a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. And I, I kind of stress the importance of like doing those three hikes. I don't bring my DSLR with me. I'll take some like phone shots or I guess some quick selfies, you know, if I'm at a cool part or you know anything like that but yeah i, I just keep the camera at home because you know obviously i be slop i'll be stopping like every five seconds and just taking photos of everything spending hours doing that which is fine if i want to do that of course but um like i said sometimes you just need to enjoy just being out there and kind of like the locomotive motion of just moving and stuff being on the move yeah or or even um what i do occasionally is uh just bring a really lightweight setup like no tripod just bare bones camera and the lens maybe just the smallest lens you have uh yeah, i'll do that occasionally yeah. yeah it it helps your expectations you don't you know you know you don't have your tripod don't have maybe the best lenses you know i'm not gonna get good photos but you know i can capture some just memories of the hike along the way yeah i like that yeah maybe I per yeah you, i sorry you could look at it as like maybe limitations almost where it's like if you have that, just that one lens and it might be something that's like a maybe like an unusual choice for you at a certain place or habitat but like you could use that as like a limited like challenge i guess and just see what you can come up with so, so what, I'll do, what i'll do usually is i like hiking on those bright sunny days that aren't always the best for photography mm -hmm. um and sometimes i'll bring like my 85 millimeter prime um and just go handheld on my camera strap like no no bag for my camera um, and I'll just maybe shoot black and white, like through my viewfinder and just kind of experiment a little bit occasionally. And it's just, it's nice to have. Um, and I find that like leaving your phone in your bag and then just taking pictures on that camera instead can help on hiking because phones can be really distracting. 
uh, at least for me. So some, sometimes it's like a good alternative. Yeah, definitely. I've done some like some of my longer hikes. I've done what I do is um, you ever seen those like GoPro like head mounts? Uh huh. You ever seen this? Yeah, I have one of those, and I'll just so that way I kind of like record the experience in like a video format, uh, which I think, feel like is pretty cool to do it twice. But I just like had that on recording like indefinitely almost, and just see how much I can get before the battery runs out. Oh, cool. And that can be pretty cool because it kind of like it's not as distracting as the the phone, so to speak, because it's just up there and it's recording your like point of. But yeah. you kind of you almost forget about it in a way. But I've had people compliment me on the trail like, "Oh, cool, we got a GoPro." Yeah, <laughs> just talk about it. Do you record the whole time, like the whole hike? Oh, no, no. Sorry, I guess I said it wrong. But yeah, I kind of misinformed. What I've done in the past for a couple of hikes is um, I have them uploaded on my YouTube channel. Is that's, they'll be like 20-minute videos, but I'll just like every couple minutes, I'll record like 15, 30 seconds and just you know shut off that video clip. And I'll just do that like periodically. I won't have like a set. Like I need to do it um, arbitrary numbers, I guess. But like, yeah, I'll just... Every once in a while, just turn it on if it's a nice view in front of me, and uh, kind of so you kind of get the gist of the whole entire hike I was on. Yeah, just kind of remove all the distractions and just a simple way to capture things. Yeah, and I mean it's easy as just you know raising your arm over your head and just you know recording hitting that record button. Yeah, so you, you do kind of get you do kind of forget about it, I guess. So what are what are some of your like favorite environments to hike in? Uh, good question. Um, at least strictly for uh, hiking speaking, like any kind of woodlands, obviously going to be great, usually pretty much all times a year. Um, fortunately, I have like a lot of Ohio's kind of woodland around here. Uh, so, you know, lots of you know, big hills and wood ravines, which are just perfect for hiking, you know, get your exercise and everything. Um, so I would say, you know, mainly woodland. Um, other kind of body day, and it's not like the middle of summer because it could get really hot. Uh, maybe some like meadow and prairie because it's just like wide open space. And you're just out there in the open, which could be cool. And uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, I guess wetlands, I guess that counts as a hike because um, that's one of my favorite habitats in, in general for photography or um, otherwise. And uh, yeah, just kind of a little bit of everything, really, as much as I can get into. You know, strap the boots on and go to. Yeah. How about you? I, I definitely agree with that. Um, I, I'm pretty much the same as you. Kentucky has a lot of woodlands as well. Um, mm -hmm. I've I went to Alberta, Canada a couple. This it's probably been like five, four or five years now, um, and that's very mountainous. It's like in the Rocky Mountain range. Mm, cool. um, so that was really fun. Like they're not like the kind of mountains where you need to have equipment, but uh, pretty vertical hikes. It's quite the challenge. But uh, a lot of these big mountains in like Canada would have tea houses on the top, so you could <laughs> hike for eight miles or so, and then there'd be some tea and like beautiful mountain lakes. So wow that sounds awesome yeah <laughs> i wish there's i wish there's always tea awaiting me at the end i know yeah. you know, we'll, we'll find that in ohio or kentucky <laughs> <laughs> well maybe we should start it i mean you know imagine in the middle of winter you get on this long hike and you're just like exhausted and it, yeah you get this hot tea at the end like man that'd be great <laughs> uh -huh. yeah i'm actually uh i found out this week that uh, I'm headed to Yosemite this summer, so I should be doing Ooh. a lot of mountain hiking. Ooh, <laughs> look at you. Yeah. You're uh, going out there far, man. Excited. You're traveling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, open up, you know, level out the restrictions, and you're just going. That's great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My whole family's vaccinated, so I think it's it's pretty safe at this point. So we're just going oh, yeah. to I mean, I'd imagine you said in the summer, right? Yosemite? Yeah, we're going to go to... Uh, san francisco for a couple of days in like the redwood forest and then drive down to yosemite for a few days okay okay yeah i'm just thinking it might be kind of crowded but because yosemite yeah it's good, it's, good. it's gonna be crowded but i'm getting up at 5 a.m every morning and like <laughs> gonna shoot like the tunnel view and all that stuff so oh yeah that's awesome right on yeah i like the sound of that so you're gonna bring your camera gear and all that too oh yeah oh yeah probably during right. the day i'll leave the camera gear in the hotel but uh definitely in the morning and evenings i'll be getting those sunrise compositions over the mountains and stuff <laughs> Dude, that's awesome yeah hopefully you get some good shots though so. i'm very excited like I, <laughs> it's, be fun. i'll be stuck in here in ohio probably at least <laughs> we'll, we'll see i mean I, things yeah. can change we'll, we'll have to hike together in ohio this summer i'm sure i'll, I'll be up there too so oh yeah no doubt i'll make yeah 
I'm for it. It'd be great. Yeah, I could show you my patch of the woods a little bit more. We got some cool places. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, kind of segues into our next question. I want to ask you is: Do you generally consider yourself like a solo hiker, or do you like kind of group hiking? I've done both, but I mean, which one do you kind of prefer? Um. Well, when I was younger, I used to hike a lot with my family, but now that I'm more independent, I pretty much say I'm <laughs> like almost like a ninety percent solo hiker. Uh, <clears throat> I, I just really enjoy it. It's just a very personal thing for me. And I just like taking my time or going fast. I've known to be, I'm known to be quite the fast hiker. Um, I remember one story I was with my family in Canada again, and we were hiking a big mountain and I made it. Um, we stopped at the top and we all went down at the same time. And I, I got back to the hotel um, like an hour and 20 minutes before everybody else did. <laughs> nope i was just walking <laughs> yeah, I'm that's great quite the fast hiker i still yeah. enjoy it like i stop at the views and look but like i mm -hmm. I, I make good time so <laughs> you hustle yeah i can appreciate that man i'm, I'm the same way because i mean i mean like endurance endurance like activities are in my blood like i've always loved cycling and like cross-country running and stuff you know, just stuff where it's connect motion moving you know, so hiking is just naturally like in my blood too. Um, but yeah, I'm the same way where I'm like a nice, I'm a pretty like average height person, but like, I just have a big stride and I, I walk really, really fast. Yeah. I gather the last steps. So uh, I'm the same way where it's like, I prefer the solo hike. How tall are you? Speed. If you don't mind me asking. How dare you? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm about five, seven. Same. So, so for like a 150, 140 ish pound person, like it's probably average height, I would say, but some people say I'm taller than that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> taller I'm than five average. Seven. I'm five seven as well. Um, okay. Six, six foot people have it so easy for hiking. You know. <laughs> you telling me? I've got yeah. I've got on some with yeah six foot people. It's like man, you just get the big stride. Yeah. <laughs> as weird as that sounds, but yeah, I mean I'm the same way though. It's like I like the solo hikes. The, the like you said, it's kind of more personal, solitary like experience. Mm -hmm. But you know, I've had done tons of group hikes uh, with the cameras and without, and it's like I enjoy those a lot too with a, you know, a good close friend or whatever. Yeah. I go hiking with my friends a lot. It's not like quite as intense as the hikes I go on, but just kind of messing oh, yeah. around in the woods. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> Skipping rocks over the creek. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many times though. Yeah. And those are much more like a laid back, just kind of unwinding, I guess, mm -hmm. walk yeah. through the woods. But yeah, when I'm like solo, it's like, it's on, you know, I'm not like, I'm out there to get some miles. I don't really care. You know, who's I'm trying not to stop, but, so people are just such talkers, you know, which isn't really a bad thing. But like some days I'm like, I'm trying to meet like a goal, so to speak. And it kind of just like 30 minutes even. It's ridiculous. Mm. <laughs> it's do you ever, uh, do you ever like listen to music or anything or do you just kind of? Um, good question. Good question. Yeah, Cause I'm a big music listener, but like more often than not lately, past couple of years, I really don't. Um, years ago. Yeah. I was, I was always about music and just, going hand in hand but um more often than not it's more like a security safety thing just my surroundings because you know if i have like those closed ear like bluetooth earbuds you know i have a pair of them and if i was walking around my neighborhood that's fine to me like i'm not really too concerned about getting hit by a car or someone i don't know mugging me or something but like it's kind of weird about it and plus i like to hear bird song and stuff of course you know all times of year and just kind of enjoy the sounds out there but like yeah, I mean, I guess more often than not lately, no, but I used to a lot, of course. Yeah, there's course. there's nothing like the sound of the wind when you're hiking. Like, oh, yeah. If it's a light wind on the leaves, it's it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a nice calm thing. And I guess, it's, I mean, music can be calm, of course, but yeah, it's more, I don't want to call it a distraction, but I guess when I'm out in nature, I want to hear nature, so to speak. Yeah, I'm the exact same way. I'll, I'll like yeah. listen to music when I'm like, maybe like taking a walk, like not in nature, but like definitely right. when I'm on the trails. Like I never, I don't even bring headphones or anything. I see a lot of people I pass on the trails and they'll do that, of course, but they might have their dog with them or they might be on the run. I mean, it's totally cool. I mean, whatever mm -hmm. you want to do, but yeah, I mean, it's the need for it necessarily. I just like to just enjoy the sounds out there, you know, whatever it may be. Yeah. The only, the one case I would suggest playing music, um, and depending on the state you live in, uh, if there are bears, you should probably play music through your phone speaker, not through headphones, but through like a phone speaker. Oh yeah. It, it really helps with deter deterring them. 
So, yeah, and I found that to be. Um, we could argue, not argue, but we could discuss maybe like the ethics, I guess, of hiking. A lot of we talked about leave no trace and stuff like that in previous episodes, but yeah. I mean, like um, people that can be really noisy on the trail, you probably had a lot of those because I have a lot of kids or just adults with loud music or they just are too loud in general, uh, which uh, kind of grinds my gears a little bit. But I yeah, don't know. I feel like the I feel like the bear music thing is kind of the exception because like, well, it, yeah, it's a it, legitimate concern. You yeah. Know, if you're in bear country, that is. I mean, most of Ohio, we don't we don't really have to uh, worry about that. I'm not sure about Kentucky for you, but I'm guessing it's kind of similar. Yeah, not in my part of the state. Like where Ryland lives, there's a ton of bears, but not in this part. Okay. Yeah, I'm on I'm on like southwest Ohio, and I know eastern Ohio has much more hilly kind of terrain, and you might see some. It just depends. And um, I, I was talking to someone actually. It's a little tan here. I was talking to someone I met on the trails um, at a local wetland fen like a couple weeks ago, and he said, um, a nearby city actually from where I live up north, uh, he said there's like been a uh, he said like an outbreak of bobcats. Which I was like, huh. what? Like here? I, I mean, like I know they're in Ohio, and I've seen them at like um, rehabilitation centers here in the state. But like, I was like, really? Like bobcats out here? Me, but he's like, yeah, it, it happens. You know, they could have a big push, and they could just migrate. I guess you know for food and stuff. So I just, I don't think they're going out there to like eat us or kill us. But like, I would flip out if I saw a bobcat, and like, if I had my music in or something, and I couldn't hear it, you know, I just, I don't know kind of scary a little bit <laughs> yeah i mean they are like today i was uh it wasn't a bobcat but i was walking out of my garage with i was literally i was listening to music and there was this cat just staring at me it wasn't a bobcat just like a house cat <laughs> right outside the garage staring right at me and it gave me the biggest shock <laughs> small little cat yeah yeah of course you can um, do is call you <laughs> but i mean that's a good thing to bring up like there are some wildlife to watch out for and hikes even like in our areas like snakes uh, i'm always nervous about stepping on a snake um, oh yeah i've had some between my feet i'm just walking in i'm like look down i'm like oh gosh that's not a tree root <laughs> yeah. yeah it could happen and it, it like oh i I, f I feel like generally speaking like ohio's pretty safe like i've never really had like a dangerous thing really happen to me because of wildlife let's say but um because yeah we don't have much like stuff that can really kill you necessarily Mm -hmm. bite you like we have non-venomous stinks that'll bite you sure um you know chiggers mites those things are painful in the summer make you itch stuff ticks. like that i mean ticks, ticks can kill you I guess, yeah i guess lyme disease and all that but yeah um I, ticks are probably my biggest concern like in this in my area at least like mm -hmm. i feel like that's only like the real threat to health yeah well, you probably, uh, I know up here we have more than one tick, and I believe it's the red ones called, I think they're called deer ticks, is the ones that carry Lyme disease. The other ones, they're like usually more black. They don't carry that, you know, that path. Mm -hmm. or so I've only found a couple of these, yeah, the little black ones. So I, I've been safe, I guess, knock on wood. But, um, you know, I'll get home, and sometimes it'll be like the next morning, and I'm like, look down my leg, and it's just hanging out right on my skin. Mm -hmm. but it's freaky. Like, they just don't feel it. So you have to be actively looking for them, you know, shower or something, you know, rub your legs until you just make sure every inch, square inch is just free of any bugs or stuff. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're the real deal. There's a, a new kind, apparently, that can make you allergic to red meat, like, literally. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I know. Um, have you heard lately about the 17-year cicada outbreak this summer? Uh -huh. It's. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's said in May and June, it's going to be like they're just going to be so loud and everywhere. Like it's going to be deafening to go outside. So I'm not sure about hiking. We'll see. We could get some good cicada photos. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. They'll be flipping, you know, flying around in our face probably, but you know, uh, um, I've, I've heard stories. So I'm 17 years old. So that, like the year I was born that summer, there were cicadas everywhere. And I've heard stories of them like in my stroller and stuff like, all over me and stuff so. i think it was yeah it's what's the math 2004 i think uh -huh. 17 years ago yeah it's i i can't remember that time honestly i was only like six or seven i think um but yeah it's it's gonna be interesting we'll see what happens <laughs> uh it'll make hiking interesting uh, i haven't really crazy. heard like with all the things going on this year i haven't really heard people talking about it much like, oh really people are gonna get pretty surprised i bet like 
there's a couple of um, hiking groups I frequent online, and yeah, they've been talking about it. They've been saying it's going to happen, and people like break it down the timeline. I guess I think they said it's going to be like mid, like early June to mid July. It's kind of like the peak time, so it's going to be like a month and a half of just <laughs> chaos. I guess lovely, um, lovely, yeah. yeah but I, did the we'll see. can birds eat cicadas? Because I was wondering if like probably benefits them. It's kind of interesting with birds because um, I was just reading the other day. I was doing some like bird studying and like their their uh, dietary habits. It's kind of interesting. So a lot of birds will switch up way through the season or year, and uh, depending on you know if it's winter versus summer or something. But um, a lot of birds will like eat fruits and berries and you know stuff like that. And then like the other part of the year, they'll eat like insects and um, yeah, just I don't know worms. You know, just any other kind of like living little creatures and stuff. Um, so obviously it depends on the bird species, but, um, there's probably no doubt, you know, going to be some birds that eat these things up. I'd imagine like maybe some like swallows cause they, they're, they're like the aerialist birds that oh, yeah. they, they literally feed on the way as they're flying through the air. Going to be just, just cicadas. <laughs> Open my... your mouth and just get a ton of cicadas. In them. Oh man, they'll be, they'll be healthy. <laughs> Eating, you know, get, get their meals every day. I, I don't know though. I don't know if swallows probably would eat them. Cause they're not, they're not cicadas huh are cicadas like really big i can't oh I mean, yeah they're they're big like like palm of your hand kind of big no not quite that but like they're they're one of the biggest like insects yeah yeah i just I mean, you've, you've seen those shells right see those sh you've seen the shells right like yeah i mean they're pretty much that size so another tangent but those horse flies you ever seen those Ew. oh my god oh they're huge and i ugh. hate them they, they just attack you and it's just miserable ugh. right yeah you know, I, I had them hit my face and it's like you know just full speed <laughs> it hurts kind of almost because they just hit you I I've, been a kid, the, I, I've been on the I'd, beach with horse flies before it's miserable ugh, no thanks i don't i see them seldomly in ohio in the summer but Oh, I remember as a kid, I had like a little pail and I just had one like dead in the pail at the bottom. It's like, Ugh. It's like mom, what is this? Big fly. But that's another and, thing. That's another thing with hiking. Uh, you really need bug spray, especially in the summer. Oh, definitely. Especially yeah, some if kind you're of, around the wetland area. I mean, it, it, you can uh, get swarmed. Have you ever been swarmed by mosquitoes? Um, Probably. Yeah, bugs in general, for sure. Uh, no doubt it's probably happened to me i just can't recall time i've been knocked off my bike by mosquitoes it's it sounds crazy <laughs> but legitimately they swarmed me and i literally fell off my bike because of it Ugh, i can imagine though yeah that's no fun huh yeah i mean i always recommend like if you do uh, like i said earlier with like through hiking and any long distance ones i'd recommend like uh, pretty much the time you're recording this now it's like mid-april um the early spring is beautiful because there's no it's little snow it's irritating Midsummer, mid, people think like midsummer is great, but it's like you get all those bugs in the middle of the day, sweats, and you know, it's just really muggy and miserable, humid. Yeah, so, August too is a really bad time for hiking. Oh, yeah, moisture and yeah, <laughs> it's a pen. So, I, I've actually grown to like winter hiking, honestly. Like, yeah. as long as you dress smart, there's no bugs, like, it's kind of nice, actually. Yeah, and I, I can go, I find that I can go longer distance is in the winter. Oh, yeah. Because you're, I guess, uh, I'm not like a, a biologist, I guess, so to speak, or whatever you call it, but um, like your muscles tighten in, in the cold, so you kind of travel more distance too. Yeah, like, there's less stuff to when do you're in listening. the winter overall too, so like, you know, you right. take a long hike, yeah. And plus, like, it's like you're giving yourself warmth too, it's like a cycle because you're, you're on the move and stuff, so, and you're wearing all these layers, so you're kind of like sweating a little bit underneath if you dress right, it should just be a just right where it's not like dripping sweat, of course, but you're like, you're getting that warmth and it's going to like help you kind of keep moving. But in the summer, you're like, it's almost like you're just shedding all this bucket of sweat a little bit. It's gross, <laughs> but it actually, it can slow you down too, because obviously you're dehydrating yourself a lot faster. Like if you're out in the middle of a sunny day and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's spring and fall, you know, especially fall, like a nice chill day, but it's not too cool, mm -hmm. not too hot, yeah. just right. You know, that too could be a you know, great time, but Summer is overrated, in my opinion. The, the worst feeling <laughs> for hiking is in the summer, and it's a humid day, and you have to like 
crawl through some brush like on the trail like that's the worst like leaves just hitting you and like bugs yeah. getting all over you have you have you ever like early early morning you know go to your local park or something somewhere and like you ever heard of breaking the trail you ever heard of that term oh yeah the spider webs yep yep <laughs> oh my god it happens every time it's terrible yeah i know it's always like a it seems like it's always like august where it's like it gets that um very moist like morning dew and stuff and you get these spider webs just laid out in front of every trail ever imaginable and like yeah they just smack you right in the face so gross so i i go to this place called um nettle roth bird sanctuary a lot um in the summer the the manicuring on that trail is terrible like it, it gets so overgrown mm-hmm. I'm, yes. I think I've convinced I'm literally the only person that goes on it. Honestly. <laughs> Cause it's like, a, it's like a park inside of the park. So like, I don't think people really go. Um, and it's, it's, it's crazy. Like all the spiders, I'll get on me. Uh, spiders have gotten into my camera bag. Like when I go on those trails, like they'll oh. crawl into it and it's, it's just weird. It's, it's, it's worth it though. Cause it's, it's like a wildlife <laughs> sanctuary, but it, it's good, but not good at the same time. <laughs> Do you, do you get a lot like a lot of the really big spiders like any yeah uh, i'm any not too like the big poisonous? spiders not poisonous i've had the black widow on me before oh, dude. It, was on, it was on my boot um oh, I, just, I wouldn't stop it actually but <laughs> i just like uh shake it off kick yeah, it yeah i shake it off yeah <laughs> yeah i i try to be more conscious now i'm older about like because you know they say like spiders especially indoors in your house can like kill other bugs and other like pests, I guess. Um, so I try to be more conscious about killing spiders. But you know, growing up, I stopped them as many as I could. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you're just like, I hate them. You know, not my first thing. I want my camera back though. Ugh. You have it's to watch terrible. out for uh, ant hills as well on hiking. Oh, uh, uh, imagine yeah. setting down your bag next to one for oh, like a, my God. Like, like, oh, I'm gonna take this waterfall shot for half an hour, and then you just kind of up and you're like, oh, what's that? I feel something itching my back. <laughs> Ugh. this episode's gotten really gross hasn't it <laughs> yeah but i guess to be fair like i think it's pretty gross overall let's be real like it can get like if you go on the rain too we can talk about rain too in a moment but like it gets nasty and you get nasty like yeah. this isn't like a this isn't really like a at least for you and me probably like it isn't really like a pretty little outdoorsy like stroll in the park like, you're out there in the mud and the yeah just everything you know the elements overall yeah especially if i'm hiking and doing photography i'll be covered in mud oh yeah if there's if there's mud i'll find it and i'll have to get in it for some photo usually i I take a note of which like places around me that have the like the muddiest trails and just kind of dress accordingly and plan for that you know if it's a rainy day i'm like well that place is gonna be swamped this place has gravel paths or boardwalk and it's gonna be much more safer or just you know maybe i don't want to get so dirty too just depends have you ever done um like like sim- semi long distance uh creek walking before? Oh like waiting? Yeah. Uh yeah, yeah, actually I have. Um I that's how I drop cameras actually, but so I try to do I try to do it without like minimal electronics or anything, just probably myself and chest waders, uh to be honest. But um yeah, waiting's so much fun and um because Ohio is just kind of you know, it's Ohio, so like we have lots of waterways, which is great, and lots of creeks. Lots of big, kind of deeper ones and shallow ones alike. And, uh, yeah, I love waiting. It's fun. Yeah, I do it's it a in fun... Ohio as well. Um, it's, my grandparents it's a... are on the Beaver Creek, so it's a fun creek. Oh, me too. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Would you look at that small world, everyone? Uh-huh. And a little yeah. bit um, at certain portions of it. And it's it's a neat way to like uh, open up perspectives on like just seeing things, I guess, in general. Like it's just mm-hmm. It's just neat to me, I guess, is what I'm saying, you know. Um, but you know, it's fun though. Yeah. Waiting, waiting is a lot of fun though. Yeah, Something definitely, else. definitely a couple things to like look out for with like uneven ground. Like sometimes you can sink in Ugh. a little bit and weird like grasses that you can get caught on. And, yeah. Know. It's especially, yeah. If you're in like murky waters, which a lot of the creeks I go to, if they're not shallow and you, you know, you just don't know where you're stepping half the time. So you have to be careful. And yeah, like you said, like grasses and things will catch you as you like, you lift your leg and I've like legit tripped before. And just fallen here's face first in this dirty water. Ooh. Yeah, just yeah. Like I said, we get gross out here, but it, it's kind of I, I revel in it. You know, it's part of the fun, the gross factor. You know, it's like if you're on a multi-day trip, um, and you're probably not gonna be accessing a shower, probably. 
uh, at least probably stuff like that. People like us, but you just get. You ever done like a kayak trip before, like a long distance? Uh, no, um, it's kind of something I've always wanted to try: kayak or something, canoes. But um, no, I haven't actually. Have you? I do a lot of kayaking, um, especially oh. in the summer. Cool. Uh, I've never, I've never like done an overnight kayak. Uh, it's definitely one of my goals, but it, it's awesome. super fun. It's just very peaceful. Um, you get to like see like beavers and otters swimming next to you in the creek, and it's, it's just really fun. That sounds awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of like boat launches and uh, canoe launches around my area, um, which I go to them a lot for like bird photography, but not 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 kayaking. I'll keep that in mind though. I know. Uh, have you ever watched Mark Smith on uh, YouTube? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Hey, he's a wildlife photographer in Florida, and he has an inflatable kayak that he uses. He's brave. He goes into the swamps with the alligators, um, and he gets amazing photos because like, a lot of birds aren't scared of kayaks, and you can get really close to them. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never tried it. I'm not brave enough to bring my expensive gear out into a boat, but I, I'm perfectly satisfied with just kayaking without a camera. It's super fun. Right. Yeah. It's probably because I'm guessing it's because it's kind of slow moving and it's quiet. Birds are more comfortable. Mm -hmm. I see lots of herons and stuff too, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds awesome though. I bet you could get those waterproof housings. I don't know how much those cost, but oh, those maybe... are like a thousand bucks. Like even for like really? cheap cameras, they're so expensive. It's crazy. Uh, a Ziploc bag? It's like 10 cents. <laughs> maybe... <laughs> I don't trust the Ziploc bag. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I don't trust it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you, honestly. I, I, do, I do that for like rainy day photo ops, but yeah, it's it's only for pitter patter of rain, not like to submerge it, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I don't um, I don't even think like a like a big one DX camera could like survive a fall in water. Honestly, I don't want to fathom that. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, um, yeah. So like, what kind of other hiking art related gear do you use? Do you use like trekking poles, gaiters, headlamp, compass, boots, like? I so, boots, but. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll start, I'll start with boots. Um, footwear is extremely important. I've got my main daily drivers, as you would say, <laughs> are, uh, I believe they're, what's that company that makes Timberlands? Or is it just Timberland? I think it's Timber. Yeah, I, think, it's, I think that's a brand. Yeah. Timberland. Yeah, it's a uh, Timberland. They're waterproof boots. I didn't want like the ones that go like, I didn't want like rain boots. I already have rain boots that I use occasionally. I wanted ones that go up pretty high on the ankle to keep water out. Um, they're totally waterproof. I use them in the winter, even like even in icy water. Um, hmm. uh, and I usually, they, I mean, they work amazingly. Uh, I've tried to wear tennis shoes out on the trails and all the times I do, I end up falling like legitimately. Like if it's muddy, oh. like I will fall. Like I need wow. good footwear. Uh, <laughs> one situation that sticks out to me in, in January, I, I was wearing flip flops on a trail. It wasn't even like a hike. It wasn't even like a serious hike. It was just like a birding thing. And I fell and dropped my bird lens. It was fine, like totally good, but it could have been really bad. <laughs> I feel like everyone goes to that flip flop experience at least once to just like learn a lesson. <laughs> Man. Yeah, it was nice light and just a nice, I, what I thought was a simple bird trail, but it was very muddy. So. I, hmm. I feel yeah but footwear is very crucial i'd suggest waterproof boots um and maybe probably get some rain boots too for the creek expeditions if you plan to do those hmm. definitely yeah it's with like uh wearing like trainer boots shoes like um running shoes you know athletic ones is that they just get so wet like if it's like morning dew or it, even if it's not raining like it's just i don't know they always get wet to me in mud or something um so yeah yeah they're, they're designed okay. to breathe so like they'll, right. they'll take the water in right yeah so like I, i'll even tell myself like oh this is a little you know for a mile or two but like i just end up getting these wet socks which is no fun you know i try to avoid that at all costs um so yeah i wear like high top merrill boots um, those are my go-to's i can stand in like a shallow creek and be totally fine um, they're really sturdy and durable. Um, I, I don't think they're steel toe is the pair I have, but they definitely feel like it has like that kind of just nice toe. Um, to yeah, it, you know, that's important. So, yeah, like, yeah, it's super good traction. Like I wear them all year, and it's they just work perfectly fine. Lots of like cushion padding, especially near the ankle support. Um, nice. I'm getting nerdy. 
it's, it's nice wide and stuff. Um, so very nice pair of boots. That brand in general is just excellent, and I recommend them. Um, I also, um, for a lifetime time. warranty, I believe too. If you like break your boots, they'll give you. Oh wow! You like another pair or something? Okay. Yeah, like for life. And I still have mine. I think a year and a half strong now, and I'm like, I'm never going back to anything else. They're so good. Yeah. Um, also, for kind of the photography aspect of wearing boots, make sure you get kind of a neutral color. Cause like there's, oh, yeah. I've seen some pretty bright colored boots and those will scare away birds instantly. So just... it's, it's funny you say that my Merrill's came with like bright red lace. <laughs> and get, they're, they're like a solid Brown boot with some gray kind of tones. So like, I wasn't, it wasn't the overall boots fine. Like it's a neutral tone, like you said, color, but uh, yeah, I like the second I bought them, you know, they got shipped to me and mailed in whatever. And I switched them out for like dark gray laces. That's <laughs> because... smart. Very smart. Yeah. Yeah. So now they only like, um, there's like a sliver of red on the, it's, called, it's like a little hook at the tip, kind of near the tip of the boots um, for putting, it's like for hooking on uh, gaiters. Um, you ever heard of this? Yeah, I have some. Okay. Yeah. I, I honestly, I need to use them more, but like, they're like a nice uh, kind of in between kind of, uh, I guess, piece of to use. If like, you don't want to wear traditional like rain boots, but you also want to wear your actual like uh, hiking boots is like, it's kind of like a nice in between because you just kind of throw those on your ankles or legs um and your, your lower legs speaking and yeah they just kind of trap in all the the mud and stuff from getting into your mm -hmm. socks i guess or on, on your pants i so really those should are pretty i should use those more i i've like never used them <laughs> that, nothing says you're a hiker i think more than wearing those like so, someone that wears those always looks serious to me about what they do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i've seen a few people i'm like you look like like a hiking person just because you have gators on i can always tell uh -huh. so, separates the casuals i guess so what about uh hiking sticks do you use those trekking poles um not really <laughs> honestly um i have i have, I have a, like a cheap 40 dollar pair of them i bought like it's like a field stream pair that i bought like three or four years ago and one of them broke like it's one of the like, twist lock ones um mm -hmm. and one of them just went one of them wouldn't stay in because they have like that shock absorbing power built in um, so you kind of feel that give, that bounce when you hit it, strike it into the ground as you're moving. Um, one of them broke. So I only have one so far, which is fine. You can hike with one perfectly fine usually because I'm not going up mountains, you know, really in Ohio. Um, but yeah, I don't really use them except long as of long hikes. I'll bring that one trekking pole and just kind of have that some stability. Um, and uh, actually, I learned this the other day is that trekking poles, people think like, why would I waste my time using those? But like, when you think about when you walk, you ever like walk really far, like a long distance and you haven't like, your arms are kind of swaying at your side, right? You know, at, at rest. Do you ever feel like your hands swell up? My hands what? Do you ever feel like your hands swell up? Like you ever not, feel that? Not really. Um, it's usually like my shoulders hurt from like oh, swaying. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, sometimes when I'm like on like an intentional walk, like just in the neighborhood or anywhere, it's like, um, I don't know. It's like a sensation you get because um, I, I think it's like blood loss to your hands because it goes to other parts of your body as you're moving. And yeah. so it leaves your hands, excuse me, it leaves your hands. And um, yeah, so you kind of feel like that swelling almost in your hands. And I, I learned the other day is like trekking poles actually keep your hands moving in like a fist because you're gripping those and they're above your like waistline and it keeps you from swelling up, which I thought was really neat. They're, that being they're, they're great uh, it's yeah. like it's hard to compare like it's not like an instant feeling of relief always so like it's hard <laughs> for some non-serious hikers to understand um but it, it really does make a difference and just like the gators it kind of screams like oh i'm a hiker like if, if you have them on you you know on the trail so i can always tell the more serious people from the like we'll call them casuals because <laughs> you know a lot of them have at the bigger places i've been to like trekking pools because you know they, they do help though and if, if you need to clear some brush as well, like just mm -hmm. move some things out of the way, those are good as well. And and um, some tents actually um, require those trekking poles as like part of the frame. You ever seen those? Mine doesn't need it, but. Oh, that's that's cool. It's, it's pretty smart though. It saves space. Yeah, it kind of like your trekking poles become part of your pitching the tent. Um, it's pretty neat. Yeah, but my, my tent uh, works independently, so I, I don't require them, which is for what I do nice. Um, but yeah, it's there's something to invest in. Get a good quality pair. Probably like twist lock ones are best. So what my next pair will be in the future if I so choose to get one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, headlamps. Do you? Uh, I don't have a. I I think I have a headlamp somewhere, but I 
I've literally <laughs> never used it. I have a head. How do I say this? It's like a. Oh, it's that light like, band. No, it's like a flashlight that's built into my hat. It's like oh, a hat flashlight. Yeah. yeah, it's from LL Bean. Hat light. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I like it. I need to get the. It has some kind of weird batteries. I need to replace the batteries. It's dead right now, but um, it's it's really good. The one thing that freaks me out though is the wires are exposed Ooh. for the battery to the light. So I'm afraid I'm going to get electrocuted at some point. <laughs> is it? Is it like? Does it feel heavy on your head? Like, do you feel like this bulky like section of it where the no, it's, it's like a very small battery and a very small light. It's pretty powerful, but like it's it's a very you but you don't feel it. Like it it looks pretty stupid, um, but you don't feel it at all. <laughs> as long as it's functional. Uh huh. Because some of us really look dorky on the, out on the trail. Let's be honest. Oh yeah. <laughs> but you know you kind of need this stuff to, you know, just be efficient, I guess, on the move. Yeah. Uh, is it like a C battery for that? Like a like a watch battery? Um. Yeah, I think so. Something okay like so yeah i actually have a petzl headlamp and I, I use it quite a bit um to kind of every once in a while i guess like if i could if i hit the trail really early before sunrise that's kind of nice if like you're like an like a dark deep woodland and you can't really see in front of you um, that, that's kind of like a situation that's pretty nice or of course if you're after dark and uh you just need to see simply so you know it's, it's kind of it's nice lightweight tool and a pinch you know that really save you and be more visible i guess yeah, I mean, routes at night or in early morning could be very dangerous. So it's pretty much <laughs> yeah. an essential tool, I would say. Yeah, you can't get far with that one. So especially if you do a lot of night hikes, um, there's a few metro parks in my area where you can stay out until like in the summertime until like 10 p.m. It's pretty nice. So, um, I bring it out to those pretty often. Also, I don't I don't know how much experimenting you've done with this, but you can light light paint for photography with them as well. Yeah, I've done that. Um yeah, I'm trying to think of. There's a there's more actually taken. Um, it's, I call it Twilight Tree. I printed it and framed it nice and big before. Um, that one was. Uh, let me see. I think as car headlights were going behind it, so it illuminated it. But I remember I had my headlight on full blast, um, the highest brightness, which I think it's like three thousand lumens. It's super bright. Like you can see it from far away. Oh wow! I could, I'm probably way off the number three hundred lumens. I'm sorry. It's probably it's. <laughs> it's Sorry, it's probably way way off, but it's it's a very bright headlamp. Let me just say that for how much you pay for it. But cool. Um, yeah. So what I did is that you know I did like a longer exposure because it's pretty dark out. So I was probably like 25, 30 seconds, and I just I was like moving my head up and down like in like a yes kind of motion as I was just like illuminating the front of this tree, so that way it'd come in the exposure, you know, be more brighter. So it's a neat, it's a neat, neat little technique there, I guess. It's pretty handy. Have you ever uh, shined your headlamp into like a bush and seen like eyes before? Ugh, of deer <laughs> or raccoons or something. It's, yeah. it's pretty creepy. Yeah, there's, there's a few glowing eyes I've seen. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah, it kind of gets you going a little bit. But uh, yeah. nothing, that's never been nothing like anything too bad, you know, of course. Never seen a human through the headlamp. <laughs> Ugh. There's some weird times, man. When I, I, when I did my stealth camping video, that's my second attempt at it, if you will, because my first time I went to that same location, I, um, I, I pitched my tent too late at, after dark, like I mentioned earlier, and it, like it was just I so I just packed it up and walked home. But like that first time, I was peering out over like this creek where there's like some pebbles, you know, by the creek side, and I just kind of looking out. And this is like after sunset, but it was still kind of bright out, kind of twilight, and I see this guy like on the other side of the creek, and he just kind of he didn't notice me really, and I was, I just kind of like stepped back because like oh wow, I was just kind of like. Yeah, jumped a little bit. Other side of the creek, creek there's no trail, and he kind of just disappears into the like the trees and stuff. And this was like August, so I mean it's like full foliage and everything. I didn't see him again. It was, was kind of creepy. <laughs> it, 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 I was like, what? Does, is he camping out here too? <laughs> like, I would have yeah. left right then. Oh man, that kind of like freaked me out because, like I said, it was dark enough for I'm just like I could tell it was a person, but like I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's about. It was just kind of freaky. So. You yeah. see some weird things out there. So yeah, keep your wits about you. Keep a, I don't know, a hatchet for like the worst of the worst places. I've heard some bad stories, like just dead bodies and stuff around my local parks. Did you just say found, keep, you know, did you say of... keep a hatchet? Did you say keep a hatchet? <laughs> yeah, like an axe. Yeah, not like a big axe, but like a nice little like small one. I mean, I would say like a knife or something might be a little bit more. 
Oh yeah, more compact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I'm I'm saying like yeah, a pocket knife or I, I keep like a multi tool in my person like at all times, even when not hiking. Um, but yeah, I, I just I'm not I'm not like a big uh, gun guy, but maybe someday if I have one, and if I go on a <laughs> really long hike, I might bring it. You know, there's a few places I just read stories. Um, knock on wood, I've never had anything like personally happen to me that's been freaky. But like one guy I remember at a local state park, and it's kind of in an area that's like but like so i've heard like weird like stories and cases but like this guy walked by me he clearly had a hatchet i think he's just holding it Ugh. not like in an arm position but he had a dog in it i think maybe a, like a wife or some kind of person female person if i recall this was a couple years ago <laughs> and, he, and he walked he walked by and like i don't know he just said like some weird stuff about like good thing i don't have to use this and i just like oh, it's gonna walk by him i don't know weird stuff oh, like my. that yeah, and there's a few places I've seen people like brandish a hatchet on like their belt loop, but like they never like wave it around like I'm gonna kill you. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's keep keep your wits about you. So I, some... I go to a place um, behind a mental hospital sometimes for photography, uh, so I, I always get a little bit freaked out there. <laughs> That's just freaky. I don't know. I, I always say like I never talked about earlier about wildlife, but like I feel like humans are the scariest thing out that trail. <laughs> like yeah. let's be honest. Like, I'm not really too scared of a skunk or, yeah, I don't know, a raccoon or a deer, of course, but like, yeah, some, some could, humans. Yeah, you could get, if you're looking through your viewfinder, they could sneak up behind you and just take you out. So. Oh, man. Yeah, there's, yeah, I just, I, I'm not like a big dude, but yeah, I just imagine my backpack and everything. Hiking, I think, uh, I think like not. overall, though, like, I think hiking is still a pretty safe thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, when someone somebody dies hiking, it's definitely like a big story. So it's it's not like it's common. You just have to be smart about it. Definitely, yeah. I think some really big like twenty plus mile hikes. I leave. I try to be more prepared nowadays. I'll usually text one or two people. Um, depends on who they are, close friends, and I'll be like, "Hey, I'm going to this place this time this day. Back. My tentative time is to be back at this time." And they, you know, just okay, cool. You know, if you need me, whatever. Um, and then I'll leave like a little note on my, if like a, a drive there, of course, but like, I'll leave a little note on my dash, you know, just on the front and it usually has like be back by this time. You might think that sounds weird because people can just wait and I don't know, rob you. I don't know, stuff, you know, whatever, but like, it's just in case maybe if like a park ranger sees your car still and it's like hours after, you never know. So just little precautions to be smart about, you know, Yeah, that, that's really smart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I've, I've used it a few times, and it's it's just like a nice peace of mind thing. You know, just that way you're – because, you know, it's nice to unplug and get out and be, like we said, solo and just, you know, enjoy. Overall, it's still you want to kind of be more – kind of want to be connected a little bit, you know, at least when it comes to safety, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know, your, know your area well, know the crime level in that place and just – Oh, yeah yeah. Some weird places out there. But um, anyways, let, let's end on a good note, so at least something – question so so henry do you believe do you think like i'm plugging from the camera and focusing on the hike only like how do you how do you balance that do you do you do you do like I'm a not, lot of, go ahead i'm not very good at it i will say uh, okay a lot of the times what it ends up being is i will bring my camera bag with me um and just hike really and never pull out the camera oh that's yeah. what that's what it usually is because like when I see, especially like for wildlife photography, if I'm hiking and I see something I could have taken a picture of, my heart just gets like crushed. Like, oh, I should have gotten a picture of that. So like, usually I'm carrying my bag and I need to get better about that because that's so much weight. It really weighs me down. Um, but I, you know, it's, I could get better. It's not the worst in the world, but uh, mm-hmm. I don't really balance it. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I feel like more often than not, I kick myself for not bringing my camera gear. Like if I'm just out on a hike enjoying with a friend, um, like the other, the other day, I had a local, um, there's this, you ever heard of like Virginia bluebells, the blooming kind of, they, they bloom in like typically in April, spring, early spring. Um, and I saw like a rare form of it called white bells, which are just literally the same like flower, but they're just all white. And you kind of have to like look for these in particular, cause they're just in a patch of the regular bluebells. And they're just all white, just like a little strand of them. And I saw some for the first time the other day. 
my like phone came wrong me because I was just out enjoying you know with a friend or whatever. And I was like, man, if I had like my macro lens and stuff and it's just, just like all the what ifs, you know, but like I, I kind of just uh, kind of centered myself, I guess. I was just like, okay, I'm here to just enjoy the experience. So I took like a little quick phone snapshot and just kind of just looked at them and, you know, move, moved on. Um, but you, you just kind of have to balance that, you know, balance the pressure, I guess, of photography, but just also enjoying just being outdoors to remind myself of that pretty often. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's something that, especially when you're a beginner photographer, it can be extremely hard just to hike without a camera, but mm-hmm. you'll, you'll learn to appreciate it as you kind of continue on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, I find that it's like you, you have to kind of take breaks, at least for me, like you kind of have to take breaks from the camera and just, and, and just like, if you do like a lot of wildlife and birds, uh, photography it's like it's nice to just kind of take the binoculars and just do a patch you know and just see the birds listen to the bird song and really just focus on what sh- the sights and sounds around you and i get so hung up on camera settings and getting shots they're perfect you know so it's stuff like that um even with like flowers or something like it's just nice to kind of just see nature for what it is and not be so hung up on making a shot that that to me is like really what's uh, like unplugging to me when i'm out in nature yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? What do you think? I don't. I don't think so. You just okay. Get out there and take a hike. That's all I say to the listeners. Yeah. Hike more, worry less. I think that's some saying someone said. <laughs> right now, drop everything and hike. <laughs> yeah, right now. It's almost sundown where I'm at right now as a recording. Yeah. But I'd go out right now. Shoot. I'd probably get murdered. But yeah. You don't hike. know that. We didn't. Hey, we didn't mean to like scare everyone. That's not the point of this episode. <laughs> uh, hiking is very safe. I mean, it really, as long as you're smart about it, it really is. Yeah. Like I like the worst that happens for me is like getting sore, but that's my own doing. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not, like, cause I can't blame any. I can't blame the hill I went up. I went up the hill myself. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, hiking's yeah, it's fun. It's the reason why like the camera's the excuse to get out there, but like it's not the sole reason. Like. Just enjoy the experience in outdoors. How many times can I say that? I mean, yeah, for like every for every nature photographer, pretty much the nature came first before the photography. So, yeah, definitely get back to the roots of it. We like tree pun too. (laughs) (laughs) Tree puns, but anyways, Um, got got that. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I had to say it, but um yeah i think that's it do you have any announcements or anything special um well uh i'm really excited for that trip that's actually not that far away the yosemite san francisco trip that's like (laughs) six weeks away probably so i'm really i'm really excited um i've been doing some macro photography uh so i guess look out for that uh i've got a video coming thursday well actually when this comes out it will already be out um it's about it's about my landscape photography that i did on my south carolina trip i just kind of like go through my photos my favorite photos um and then next week or two days after this episode comes out um i'm doing a wildlife edition of it so like my favorite bird shots and wildlife shots from south carolina so that's awesome man yeah i like like that kind of dual split video idea that's pretty neat Mm -hmm. cover all the bases and all the subject matter that's awesome yeah. What about you? Um, same old, I mean, same old, same old. It's uh, doing those, doing the application videos. Um, I got some new kind of just off the kind of non in the field videos, I guess. But um, I did like one of some spring ephemeral flowers. It's just like a nice little five minute B-roll video of just them blowing in the wind, with some piano music, you know, something cutesy. Now um, I want to hopefully do some more writing or blogging because I've been kind of slacking on that lately. And I need to just kind of sit down for an evening and just turn out some words just about whatever photography, hiking, all the above. But uh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much all that and more. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching the Owl Outdoors Photography Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and the video version on YouTube as well. You can subscribe down below and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.